personalized and comfortable settings can give you an edge over someone who uses default ones. In this video, I will show and explain settings that can make your life easier. They will mostly change your HUD, but some of them have more significant effect on gameplay. That will be helpful either if you are not aware of some settings at all, or if you don't want to test them yourself and just want to see what each setting does in a quick video. Language changes language. I highly recommend using something you can understand. Auto login. As soon as you press play button in launcher, after few load screens you will be logged in in your hangar automatically, without need to press anything in login window. UI scale. Changes UI size mostly in hangar. During fights it doesn't affect anything unless you hit tactical map button, settings or tab. Show bonuses on screen. Controls how awards are shown like Avenger, Base Capturer, Assist Streak, and so on. Disabling those will save you space on screen, so it might be easier to notice enemies. Damage Indicator Scale. This allows you to change the size of your information window in bottom left corner. Smaller window will give you more screen to observe battlefield, but it might be more difficult to notice damages or identify knocked out crew members. Camera shake. The more chosen, the more camera will shake after each shot. Looks nice if you are making cinematic videos. In practice can be annoying when playing vehicles with fast rate of fire or when using war emergency power with planes as image will shake all the time. I'd recommend to set minimum amount unless you are making videos. Automatically join into squads. When playing alone, there is a chance that when battle starts, you will be in squad with another player that also has this function enabled. This will allow you to repair each other in any type of ground vehicle and you also can get bonuses like the best squad. Join already going battles. There is a chance to join battle that started recently. When there are not enough players, this can reduce waiting times. But since you spawn in a match that already started, you might be in disadvantage because everyone will already be on their way to shooting positions or capture points and you just started to play. Use alternative side grid. This option is only visible after a specific ground vehicle is selected in your hangar or when you started playing it. You can download custom sites or create your own and then use this option to enable it. Air battle settings only applies when using aircraft. Default view lets you choose a view type you will be in as soon as you respawn in aircraft. You can change it anytime during battle, except in simulator battles where only cockpit view available. Guns targeting distance mostly noticeable on planes with machine guns mounted on wings. It sets distance in front of you where bullets meet. Choose the distance where you usually engage targets. That will allow you to concentrate fire at that specific distance. You cannot change it after respawning in battle. Vertical targeting. Depending on previous setting, at the same distance, Bullets will meet in vertical axis if some machine guns have different ballistic trajectories. In most cases, messes up your aim and varies a lot depending on vehicle, so for the sake of simplicity, turn it off. Aerobatics smoke type. Here you can choose smoke color and where it appears when flying aircraft. It is activated by pressing L by default can be useful to signal your allies or to attract enemies' attention in game modes without markers. Show pilot in cockpit. Controls if you will see pilot's legs and arms while in cockpit view. Autopilot for gunner and bomb sight modes. When enabled, plane will switch to horizontal position as soon as you switch to bomb or gunner view. If disabled, plane will keep climbing or descending depending on position which was set before you switched view. Automatic aircraft rearmament on the battlefield. 
When enabled, aircraft will start rearming as soon as ammunition was used. If disabled, you will have to press reload button to start rearming. It is convenient to keep it enabled. Crosshair allows you to choose the type of crosshair. Larger will be easier to notice, while smaller will not block the view of your target, especially in game modes without markers where small silhouette of enemy aircraft can be hard to see behind your crosshair. Crosshair color allows you to choose color of crosshair. Use something that stands out among usual in-game colors, so it will be more visible on different backgrounds. Indicated airspeed. When disabled, shows you speed relative to the ground. When enabled, shows airflow around the vehicle. At sea level, these speeds are similar, while higher, where air is less dense, indicated airspeed will be lower. Since aircraft maneuverability and flaps ripoff speed depends on airflow, it is recommended to turn it on and use it instead of usual speed, which has little use in game environment. Show leading. In game modes where leading is shown, a circle will be displayed that will calculate your target speed, direction and your biggest caliber machine gun's bullet speed. It will show where you must shoot in order to hit a target if it doesn't change its course. There is no point to disable it, it is useful in arcade game mode. Display aircraft damage. After you are hit, your plane's damage indicator will be shown in bottom left corner. Enabling it will let you better understand what kind of damages plane has suffered. Camera from aircraft gunner sight. Gunner sight will make it easier for you to hit enemies, but plane's tail can block a big portion of your view. And if disabled, third-person camera will offer you better view, but because of parallax, it can be more difficult to hit targets. Setting only applies to planes with one gunner. Helicopter battle settings apply only to this type of aircraft. Helicopter's hot color. Self-explanationary. Changes hot color. Just choose anything that looks comfortable and doesn't blend into environment. Helicopter's alerts color. HUD elements that require your attention, for example when out of ammunition, will be displayed in different color. Choose different than your HUD color. Horizontal speed. When enabled, speed in any direction is displayed. If disabled, only speed forward in the direction of helicopter's nose is shown normally. Backwards will be negative value and sideways is not taken into account at all. When you spin helicopter around, speed will change according to where is the aircraft's nose. Aiming with Oculus Rift helmet. Dislike the hell out of this video, I don't know what it means. Tank battle settings will be effective while in tanks. Grass in tank sight. When enabled, Grass distance setting applies. When disabled, grass will not be shown while using binoculars or in sniper mode. Disable to have a balance between a nice image in third person view and less obstacles while aiming. Player's tank destruction replay. After you are killed, it will show how opponent's projectile penetrated your armor and what damage was done. Keeping it on allows you to understand tank's weak spots. If you need to respawn as fast as possible, replay can be cancelled by pressing button. Hit camera. Shows how your projectile interacted with enemy's tank. If there was damage, displays what modules were damaged or what crew members were killed. Colors from yellow to black allows you to understand how much damage were done to these modules. Keeping it enabled allows you to better understand where to shoot to finish remaining crew members. Camera from tank gunner side. If disabled, in sniper mode you look through the barrel of your main gun. When enabled, you look through internal module called optics. That means part of your barrel will be visible and camouflage bushes can block your view. Keeping it disabled will be more convenient. In simulator battles, it's always enabled. Show destroyed modules. 
destroyed modules will be written in text in top right corner. Keep it enabled. Then, in addition to hit camera, it will tell you the roles of killed crew members or modules. Tactical map scale allows you to set tactical map size in bottom right corner. I'd recommend to set it as big as possible since being able to see small details is more important than saving bottom part of screen space. Store tactical map by scenery. If disabled, tactical map in every battle will be reset to default zoom level. When enabled, it will remember your tactical map zoom that was used on that map, and every time you fight on it, it will be the same as used previously. If you always use default zoom, the setting doesn't matter. This is the end of the first part of settings video series. All comments about what settings works best for you and especially if you explain what advantage it offers are welcome under this video.